Good morning. Good morning. Woo, good job. First time. It's great to see y'all this morning. Y'all look lovely as ever. Um, welcome to Williams if you happen to be a visitor, if you are a visitor. Um, we want you to fill out the sheet of paper, the flappy sheet in the bulletin, fold it up, and put it in the offering plate. There's a, gl a gold platter. It will come your way in a minute. We just want to have a record of your visit. Um, now, look on with me in this thing called the bulletin. It's a very important piece of material. All right, tonight we will have our um, regular worship service. We're going to start that back tonight at 6 o'clock. And it's going to be really fun and exciting, so come back, please. And also during that time, we're going to have our quarterly business meeting. Very important meeting, so come then. Um, all right, this is not in the bulletin, so pay attention. Your 2008 contribution statements are in that foyer back here. So as you leave today, go and grab yours. Um, also, there will be a property and grounds meeting right after the service this morning. You will meet with Al. All right, this Tuesday, um, the Bible studies will start back, and I believe 11.30 or 10.30? 10.30. Oh, 10. Sorry, forget the 30. 10. 10 o'clock this Tuesday in the uh, senior room our, will be the Bible study. And then this Wednesday, we have supper. Ham. Yummy. And um, it'll start at 545. Now, if you do not have a reservation, you need to see Miss Peggy today or by... Uh, in the morning and get your name on that list and eat some delicious ham with us. Then after that at 6.30 we will have our uh, Wednesday night worship. So please make sure that you are a part of that this Wednesday. All right, let's stand, give some hugs and say good morning and start our service. Are we Good, good morning. Welcome to Williams. We're here just to worship. Just turn this service over to him, okay? It's all about him anyway. Let's get started. 383. 383. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Ask you to stand with us, please. Gentle Shepherd, 458.
May the God of hope fill you with joy, all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. The Village of Hope, a former youth constructor summer camp in the Ukraine, is being remodeled with the help of CBF of North Carolina and other partners. CBF field personnel are bringing are bridging the gap between Christians who care and Ukrainian children who need parental love and a Christian family home. The Village of Hope serves 13 children with two foster families. As you pray this week, pray for the future foster families and children that will be cared for by the Village of Hope and for the short-term mission workers and teams that will travel to the Ukraine for hands-on ministry. Let's bow for a moment of silent prayer. Amen. <laughs> from that, I know that seems kind of strange, but from that I knew, and I felt like God was talking to me and 
so because of that, I got baptized. And like a lot of you are in the country, I got baptized and become Christian. But not everybody had. But when I got baptized, we had a baptistry in our church, sort of like this one. But I was too uh, too short. The water would have been too deep. So they had a milk crate. You know those things that carry milk? And they turn it over, and I sit on top of it, and then they baptize me. My dad baptized me and brought me up out of the water. And I wore that little white robe thing and some shorts and stuff underneath it, just like some of you have done before. And I remember feeling really cold at that little point because the water wasn't very warm. And then I walked down, and everybody came and touched me. But I really felt close to God at that point. And I knew that I wanted to try to know God. Sometimes I'm better at that than others. But we all try really hard to make God our, I guess, our leader and our guide. Well, today, Mike is going to talk to the adults about remembering their own baptism. And for a lot of you, you don't have that baptism story yet, but you will. Um, you guys are very fortunate to have parents who bring you to church and who love you and live Christian life before you as an example. And I hope that that's a choice that you'll make. Some of you have already made it. But today, this water touching it helps us to remember about how that, I know it's just a real simple thing, but how that can cleanse us and help us to feel really close to God. It's something that we do that we know Jesus did, and that makes us feel special too, to do something that we know Jesus did and know that, that when he did it, that it pleased God when he um, chose to be baptized. So while some of you may not have your own baptism story yet, when you do have your baptism story, to be sure that you remember to tell other people about it. Because what happens in your life might help somebody else to make that same choice. Okay? Let's go to She'd make a good school teacher, wouldn't she? <laughs> huh? Wouldn't she do good? If you're a choir member, if you want to be a choir member, 5 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to begin a rehearsal back first time for the new year. So if you've been absent for a while, I want to come back to the choir. And uh, this, if you want to join for the first time, just come visit. 5 o'clock this afternoon. We'll be glad to have you. 349, hymn number 349, Trust and Obey. First, fourth, and life standards. First, fourth, and life standards. Born with the
Today I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark in chapter 1. And before I do that, I wanted to say a couple things about uh, things that are going on at church here. One is the uh, Wednesday night suppers. Uh, that's a great time to fellowship in the middle of the week. Uh, we have a devotion. We have a study. But at 545, once every two weeks, we have supper. And we have some ladies who are very dedicated to providing us with a wonderful meal. And I just really enjoy it a lot. The only thing that's missing a lot of times is you. Uh, I hope that more of you will sign up and be a part of our fellowship supper on Wednesday night. I just wanted to be sure to stress that for you this morning. Uh, you can call the church office in the morning or let us know tonight if you'd like to sign up if you're not on that list. Uh, I know the food's good. The fellowship is wonderful. Uh, we just have a great time being together. And in the middle of the week, sometimes it's so busy, uh, it's hard to, to get supper on the table anyway, so it's nice to have a good old square meal in the middle of the week with friends and family. And the ladies from our church have been cooking for a long time, and they've got it down. They're very, very good at it. So I hope that you'll do that and consider signing up and being part of our Wednesday night suppers. It'll start back this Wednesday. Just let us know the church office by in the morning so we can be sure to order enough ham and biscuits and whatever we have for you, okay? The other thing is uh, I noticed in the, the paper this week that they put out the all-county football team uh, for Calhoun County, and uh, some of our folks made, made the team. Uh, one of them was a kicker. It's a left-footed kicker, sort of unusual, isn't it? Who was that? Cody Ponder. <coughs> Cody Ponder. Uh, by the way, Cody does hand signals for, for songs and stuff you're leading. You ought to get him up here sometimes to be very good, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cody, congratulations. Now, was there anybody else on, on, from our church that made that made the team. I think Taylor was second team, right? Was anybody else? Ben should have been on there. I appreciate his sacrifice and work this year. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'm real proud of him, and I want us to give him a big hand for all of them. Your dedication. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, let's look at the gospel now in, Matthew, in uh, Mark chapter 1. I'll begin reading in verse 4. This is the story of the day that Jesus was baptized. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is God's Word for us this morning.
my toes tapping today. It was good. Thank you. How many of you remember your baptism? The day you were baptized, the place you were baptized. Well, today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to go back to that day when you were immersed and when you were baptized in the water and joined the church and became a Christian. And we're going to invite you to do that in a little while. We have two uh, places here where you can come. We'll have a couple of lines for you to come and just touch the water. Uh, this is just water from our church, but it's just a way for you to remember the day that you were baptized. And I want to talk to you a little bit about remembering that. It's the beginning of a new year, and it's a good time to think about the beginning of our Christian lives as we started out the walk we have with Jesus. So I hope that'll be a good way for you just sort of to get back in touch with some things that are a lot have a lot of meaning to each of us because we were baptized as Jesus was that day so many years ago. And I wanted to start by telling you a little bit about my baptism, some things I remember about some baptisms. One was my own. I was baptized when I was pretty little, about eight years old, uh, with my brother Mark uh, in Hoax Bluff at a church called Emmanuel Baptist Church. And my pastor was Brother Head, Brother Waylon Head. He had come to my granddaddy's house after talking with my granddaddy, he invited the pastor over, and at my granddaddy's living room, I had bowed and, and knelt literally in the living room there and accepted Christ as my Savior. And then I remember uh, Emmanuel is not a very big church. It's probably maybe half the size of this church, or it was at that time. Uh, but, the, but the aisle was about three or four times the length uh, of this church's aisle. Uh, you know, when you're a child and you're getting ready, and I was sitting in the back. The youth used to sit in the back back then. And I was in the back, and it was time to come forward, and I just remember that was a long, long, long walk to get up front. And uh, at that time, nobody stood with us. My parents or nobody, you know, came up there. And I, I you know, was very shy and hated to be <laughs> standing up in front of people. And there I was. And then the day for baptism came, and I remember uh, going up in a little room up in the church and putting on my blue jean shorts. We had cut off blue jean shorts uh, back then and a white T-shirt. And they gave us a white robe to put on that a lady from the church had made. And my brother and I got in the water. And I remember uh, in the water was a big cinder block. They didn't have a milk crate. They had a big cinder block uh, in the water. So if you were of certain height uh, and everybody wanted to see you, you could stand on that block. And luckily Mark and I never had that problem too much, so we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, I remember my pastor kept telling me to not let my feet fly up. And, of course, my feet flew up. You know, that was like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But anyway, it was a wonderful experience. I remember after it was over with how, how much joy and happiness it brought to my family. I, I felt that, and it, I knew it was something pretty significant. I was only eight years old, but it was, it was really something that I, to this day, remember how good it made my grandmother feel and my granddaddy and my mom and my family. And I remember we had a great meal at home that day. They were really celebrating and very, very happy for me. Um, I also remember the first time I baptized somebody. It was in... Kentucky at Stewart's Creek Baptist Church, and, uh, you know, we didn't, I didn't have a class. I didn't know how to do it. I'd only had it done to me one time, uh, and we didn't have a baptistry at our little church in Kentucky, so we would go to the big church in Campbellsville, Kentucky, uh, on a Sunday afternoon after their church services were over, and they allowed us to use their baptistry at the church. And, by the way, they also had a cinder block in, in the water there, by the way. So, anyway, we got there, and, uh, and I remember... Uh, just baptizing a little boy that was the first person that I ever baptized, and uh, he was uh, uh, in our wedding, uh, as a matter of fact, as a ring bearer. And uh, it was just a neat experience to be a part of it and to be able to stand in the water uh, on that side of it. I remember one of my friends who was a pastor at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I may have told you this story, but he was, uh, you know, at this church, when uh, it's time to baptize somebody, I call Al Boozer. And Al will fill up the baptistry. He comes up here at a determined time for himself and fills up the baptistry. And when it's over, he will empty the, the water out. The water runs out the side here. You may see that sometimes. Uh, and I'm really glad that he does that. My friend didn't have anybody to do that. And at his church in Fort Knox, Kentucky, he was, uh, he was in charge of filling the baptistry up. So I don't know if you've ever filled up a tub. It takes a little while for the water to fill up. And the baptistry is a lot deeper than that. So he... He went over there about 8 o'clock on Saturday night and turned the water on. And about 4 o'clock in the morning, he remembered that he left the water running in the baptistry. So he ran over to church. He lived next door. And the water had just started to come down past the pulpit. You know, it had leaked over the baptistry and come in. You know, there's a lot of baptism stories. And I know some of y'all have sent me 
Every time I get ready to baptize, especially boys, you've sent me little emails of the kid that runs and does a cannonball in the water. I don't know what message you're sending me, but I've, I've seen that quite a bit. Well, there's a lot more to remember about baptism than those, those kinds of things. And I want you just to have the opportunity to come forward today and touch the water. And I want to mention some things you might want to remember. You might need to go back to the day you were baptized to get in touch with some things that are fundamental about our walk with Christ. And one of those things that you might want to remember is forgiveness. I think that's something that's very, very important and oftentimes missing in our world today is to remember that no matter what you've done and who you are, that God is very, very eager to forgive you. He asks us to confess our sins and try to do better, but He is already ready to offer us forgiveness. And, uh, you know, I know in the water it seems like a bath, but it's really not washing away our sins. In the water we're symbolizing what happened when Jesus died for us on the cross. It was an incredible sacrifice. When Jesus at Calvary died for us, one of the things He said just before He died is, Father, forgive them. And we believe that by putting our trust in Jesus, that Jesus forgives us of all our sins. And maybe that was the primary reason for you to become a Christian. And when you were baptized, your pastor told you that one of the things the water symbolizes was like a bath, that you were now clean before God. We put a white robe on you to symbolize that you were pure in God's sight and you were cleansed and cleansed. And I thought about this too. Some people think that in the story of Jesus' baptism, when he came up out of the water and he heard the voice from heaven, you are my son, my beloved, uh, and, and I'm well pleased with you, that that voice from heaven, God is quoting some of the words of God in the Old Testament. There's a place in Isaiah, there's a place in the Psalm, but there's no place that my beloved, my beloved son, is except in an old story in Genesis about Abraham and his son Isaac, where he takes his beloved son to sacrifice him, but just at the last moment as Abraham raises the knife to sacrifice his son, there's a ram that's stuck there in the thicket, and the ram is substituted for the son Isaac. Now, I think that's significant because for Jesus on Calvary, there will be no ram in the thicket. He will have no one to be substituted for his sacrifice. And we as Christians believe, and one of the reasons we're baptized, we believe that his death on the cross was all sufficient for all of our sins. And so maybe when you touch the water today, it will be important for you to remember that. To remember that if you have trusted Christ and you are ready to confess your sins, he is ready, willing, and certainly able to cleanse you of all sins and all unrighteousness in your life. So maybe when you touch the waters, you will remember that you are a forgiven man, a forgiven woman, a forgiven child of God. I, I want you to take note that when I talk about forgiveness in that way, it is not really like the way you and I forgive people. We sometimes, as human beings, we just sort of let it pass. <clears throat> and we say it doesn't really matter, water off the duck's back and move on. Sometimes we won't let you forget it. We'll say you're forgiven, we forgive you, but we will hold a grudge for a long, long time, and we will hold it over your head for a long, long time. That's not what I'm talking about, and it is not God's way. God really, when you sin, takes it very seriously, and he knows that something has been broken. You've broken his law. You've broken his heart. You've hurt another person. You've done damage and added to the calamity of this world. He takes it very seriously, so he sent his son to die for us for that but he will not restore you back to where you were before. Now, I'm talking about if you really get in touch with sin and get in touch with the idea that God forgives us. He doesn't just restore you back to where you were, put you back on the path. I think everybody who has sinned, really sinned, and really felt the forgiveness of God is never, diff never the same. They're different from then on. God changes us so much so that he asks us to remember every time somebody offends us to forgive them as many times as we can to remember because we have been forgiven so much. He tries to create out of our own sinfulness and our hurt and pain and out of his forgiveness of us, he tries to create forgiving people. In other words, he gives us a possibility to become more like him in this world. Maybe you just want to touch the water. Remember that God in Jesus has cleansed you of all your sins. 
And remember that God expects you to be a forgiving person in this world. Maybe you might want to touch the water and remember community. When, you, when you're baptized, we say in the Baptist church, that's your initiation. You get to join the church. You're part of God's kingdom work. You're part of the body of Christ, the bride of Jesus. When you are baptized, you, nobody can ever say you don't belong somewhere. You know you belong among God's people. You have been accepted and you are part of something greater than you are. So maybe when you're touching the water, you might want to remember that you are part of a great cloud of witnesses that surround people's lives. You might want to remember all of those people that helped make it possible for you to be baptized whenever it was for you. You might remember that parent, that grandparent, that friend, that Sunday school teacher, that pastor, that Christian neighbor, whoever it was that influenced you. Who just, so you came to the place where you decided, I want to give my life to Jesus. And that person is always surrounding you as a cloud of witness in your life. There may be many of those people for you. They are for me. And you might remember when you touch the water that part of community is not just the folks who came before you, but the people that you worship with now. And that God intends you to be a part of a body of Christ in such a way that you help it be better. You love people. The Bible says that people will know that we're His by the way we love each other. When Jesus stands in that water that day, He doesn't have to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, but He stands there anyway because He so identifies with the sins of His own people that He's willing to stand in line and be baptized because Jesus felt so closely identified with you and me. And I think community, when you touch the water, you might remember that when you join the church, you are really a brother and sister from now into eternity. You belong to these people and they belong to you and what happens to them happens to you. It's a place in church where you can go and give up and cry and say you're weak and say you need prayer and say you need help. A place where you're confused and you try to get answers. A place where you want to support and you find purpose in your life. But a place where they will always take you in because you belong there. You're part of a family. You're part of a church. You're part of something great. No matter what anybody calls you out there and how bad it gets out there, how many ups or downs you have in your life, in here you belong and you're special and you're important because you're part of a community. Maybe today when you touch the water, you might remember that, that you're a part of Williams, that you're part of this church. And no matter where you go and what you do in the rest of your life, you'll always be spiritually here at this place. And maybe you want to remember... When you touch the water, as Jesus did, he heard the voice from, from heaven say and confirm to him, you're my son. You're my beloved son. That's who you are. You might want to remember that when you touch the water today, that when you were baptized, God stamped you with the identity of his Holy Spirit on you and said, you are my child. You might remember that God takes pleasure in you. I had a friend in Kentucky named Jim Swinsky, who was a, a Catholic, sort of fallen back Catholic. He came to our church. Uh, with his wife who played the piano at our little church in Kentucky. And Jim uh, was a pharmacist. He was a great guy. Uh, he really helped us in a lot of ways, as a pharmacist only, only pharmacists can do. Uh, he loved to fish. And he had a little boat that fit in the back of his pickup truck. And he got me into fishing with him at these little farm ponds all around where our church was. And we would go bass fishing almost every Sunday afternoon. And in fact, we would, we would drive up to church just before Sunday night church right after fishing, and if we caught fish, everybody come out and look at the fish in the back of our truck, and then we'd come in, and I'd lead music, and we'd have worship. That's the way it was there. I guess I smell a little bit about fish if it's a good day, you know. Uh, Jim told me that when he was in the Catholic Church, one of the things that they did when they first made the, the move toward Christ and then moved toward confirming, confirming the baptism that you had when you were a child, we don't do it that way in Baptist churches, he said they change your name, they give you a different name, and his name was Peter. And he always liked that name because he loved fishing so much. And he remembered that Peter was a fisherman. And I think as he grew really into his faith through our church, he realized that Peter was not just a fisherman of fish, but a fisher of people. That's what he was meant to do. In fact, last year when Mary and the boys and I went back to Kentucky, we did an ordination service, and Jim was one of the men we ordained. I ordained to be a deacon at that church. Long back, long time back when I was there, everybody thought there's no way that'll ever happen because he hadn't even joined the church yet. Maybe when you touch the water today, you might remember that God has given you an identity. He has given you a name. You are a child of God. You are precious in His sight. You belong to Him. 
no matter what anybody else says about you in this world. You are a son, a beloved son of God. You are a daughter, a beloved daughter of God. And then maybe just one other thing you might want to remember as you touch the water is that, you know, we live in a time, I think, when Christians and Christ are taken less and less seriously than they were. And, and maybe that trend will continue where people won't take you and I as seriously as we should be taken and they won't care as much about what we say concerning moral issues in our world. They just won't take Christians for, you know, for the value that I think we add to the world. They will forget that we are salt and they will forget that we are light. And it will be confusing and a lot of times you'll sort of have to worry about what to do. You might remember that when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were torn apart, it says. And in Mark, they were ripped open, and a spirit like the dove descended down, and he heard the voice from God. It only happens two other times, when the love of God in heaven seems to come and touch the love of God on earth. At the baptism of Jesus, at the Mount of Transfiguration, and at the cross where Jesus breathes his last. Those things happen. But most of the time in the Gospel of Mark, the gospel will be secret. It will be like a sower who threw out seed and the seed is hidden in the ground and nobody knows much about it. It begins to develop and it's slow. Most of the time in the gospel of Mark, the disciples will forget things. They will fumble around and they won't tend to understand it. Most of the time, that's the way it will be for you and me. Most of the time, the heavens won't be torn open. We're not sure exactly how to live our lives. We will be uncertain. It will seem sealed for us, and it will be dark, and it will be hard, and we'll just have to do the best we can most of the time. But today, today when you come touch the water, maybe you could remember the day that the heavens were torn apart for you. And you remember the day that you believed with all your heart, willing to give your life to something you believed in because you believed that the heavens were torn apart and the Spirit of God descended and resides in your life even today because God has accepted you and said, You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And you believe that even though you may not have a lot of those experiences in life, it has happened to you and God is real Today, when you touch the water, you might remember the day that the heavens were torn apart for you. You might remember the day that you got a name. You are Christian. You might remember the day that God commissioned you to work alongside Jesus to make this the best place we can make it until Jesus comes back again. I invite you to come to the water today. I invite you to come and just touch and remember. And today, as you come, even if you haven't been baptized, if you're a child or somebody else that hasn't been baptized, I invite you to touch it too. Because as Mary said, one day, God willing, you too will have a baptism story. And this might be the way it begins for you. So today for my invitation, I simply invite you who are willing to come down the middle. We have two places here where you can touch the water and then you can go back and be seated. And may God continue to bless us as we serve him here. Come now if you're willing and when you're ready.
Thank you for doing that. And let it be said that today a whole church came down to touch the waters again and to remember who it is, who it will be, and whose Lord it worships. Bob Ford, we're glad that you're here, and I'd ask Bob to lead us in a benediction today. May God bless us as we continue to serve him in our community.